Hey guys, welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In the last tutorial, I showed you guys how to move the player like this. And now I'm gonna show you guys how to do enemy movement to where the enemy is gonna follow the player, and then as the player goes on the right side, the enemy will turn around and keep chasing the player. So, let's get to it. I first want to let you know guys that I've updated to the new Unity, the newest Unity update that came out like five days ago I think, Unity 2018.2, and I'm no longer using Model Develop, I'm using Visual Studio because they took that out of Unity, they uh, discontinued it sadly. Alright, let's start. First, we're going to create a sprite. That'll obviously be our enemy, so we'll call it enemy. There we go. Whoops, let's... Okay, so for the sprite, we're going to do that enemy guy, so let's look for him. There we go. Let's move him all the way to the right. Right... There. Alright, now we're going to make a script. So first, let's make a folder for it. Oh, one thing I forgot to do, guys. We're gonna... I forgot I need to make prefabs to save our objects. To save our player and stuff, so... Inside prefabs, we're gonna drag this. And now we're gonna go to the other scene. Save. Go back to prefabs and drag this. Okay. Yeah, that works. Go back to battle scene, save. Okay, that's good for now. We'll add more prefabs later on. Alright, so inside enemy, we're, let's make a folder in our scripts called enemy. So we'll have scripts for our enemy. And we're going to create a script. We'll call it follow player X. Because it's following the player in the X position. This is so we can distinct it from the other scene when the enemy follows the player, so yeah, we'll call it this, let's drag it into enemy, and now we're going to edit it, and let's do our script, wow, that was fast, alright, okay, so first, we're going to add two public floats, one called speed, and one called stop distance, this is so we can make it so the enemy will stop at a certain time before it starts attacking our player, since we made it public, we can change when the enemy will stop following the player if it like let's say on some type of game there's an enemy with a gun and you want the enemy to get to a certain distance to the player before it starts shooting it but yeah forgot we gotta make public transform target which will be our player but there we go target equals this is so we can find our player game object with tag player uh, get component here we go transform gotta remove this s we only want to find one game object there we go that works all right now inside update this is where the movement's gonna happen Vector to at distance transform dot position. This is so we're taking the position of our target. The target dot position. If it's larger than the stop distance, what we're saying here is if the distance from the enemy is larger than stop distance, so that's when we can choose how what the stop distance is. Then transform dot position. This is going to allow it so it goes on the x-axis only. It moves towards our player. Transform dot position. Vector to dot move towards. Move towards the player. Transform dot position. Yeah, oh, I've got an S right there. There we go. Do vector two. Target dot position dot X. It doesn't X axis. Transform dot position dot Y. Speed times time. Okay. Pretty sure that's all we have to do. Let me just check some things. I've got an S right here. Is it? Oh, I got lots of misspells. Position position position. There should be an S here. There we go, that should work. So let's test it out. Good, no errors. All right, for speed, let's do seven. For stop distance, we'll test it out. Let's start with three. And the target is gonna be your player, obviously. All right, let's see. Yep, it follows us, except to a certain distance. Here, let me make the speed lower, because it's pretty fast. Oops. Three and stop distance will be two. Actually, one. Yeah. All right. All right. Watch how the enemy's following us. Then it stops, just like that. 
All right, now we're gonna do the animation. So if, we, if see how I'm on the right, if the player's on the right, the enemy will turn to the right. All right, so first we're gonna make a new layer. So let's go to layer on our enemy, add layer. We're gonna make a new layer, call it enemy. Excuse me. We'll make this enemy. And real quick, let's go back to our game and set this enemy, let's set this later enemy also. Uh, yes, change children. Save. Guys, notice that I have this sprite sheet right here. I will link this down in the description so you guys can download it because we're going to use this for the walking animation. Okay, first we got to split our sprite. So we're going to set it, our sprite mode, to multiple. Sprite editor, apply. Okay, so what we need to do here, we're going to slice all our sprites. There, we got them sliced. Whoops. Oh, wait. All right, there we go. Every other sprite, so not the first one, but the second one, this will make us here. Sorry, guys. Press apply first. Here we go. So now select this. What we need to do oops, is drag this up four times. One, two, three, four. We need to do that to every other sprite. This will give us the walking illusion to make it look like he's walk, walk, walking. Because it's all the same size and it'll just look like, like his feet are moving, but he's not actually moving up and down. Select this sprite, move it up four times, two, three, four. And just in case we use all the other sprites, I'm going to do it to all the other ones. Alright, now that I got that done, press apply. Okay, now we're gonna make our animation. So click, select our enemy, press animation, create animations. We're going to create a new folder and call it enemy. Bring that up. Let's call this enemy walk X. There we go. Now we're gonna drag in some sprites here. So let's see. Pretty sure it's just these right here. Yep. Drag these in. Let's see how fast that is. So we're going to drag this down here. Press play. Okay, that seems really fast. So let's uh, change that. There we go. That looks good. Okay, now notice he's small. We're going to make his size 1.3. So he fits the size of our player. You can change this. Let's see. Scale too. Why is this unchecked? Pretty sure we need to have that checked. Let's just test it out. There, he's doing a moving thing. Right there. As you can see, there obviously are a few glitches. We need to add a rigid body to him, and we need to add a box collider to me. And he's not even turning. So, first, we'll add a rigid body. Freeze the Z position. Now we're adding a box collider. We're gonna change this to the bigger sprite. See, there we go. Now, I'm gonna add the box collider. Okay, here we go. Now this should work. Drag it down. Here we go. All right. Boom. Now it follows us left and right, and the animation doesn't look so good, but we'll fix that next time, and we will work on the player animation so he can move left and right, have the animation, and the... An uh, code for the animation will be pretty similar to what we did in the other scene, but a little different, so it fits this kind of 2D platformer-like scene. So, I hope you guys like this video. Please subscribe. It really helps me to keep going, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!